Hey guys, uh, today's video I'm going to talk about a thing called learned helplessness. Learned helplessness, what is it and what it can tell you about maybe sometimes you feel hopeless, you feel like everything you've tried before hasn't worked. I'm going to tell you why you feel that way and how you can overcome it. Learned helplessness, right? What is it? It's important to know this because is a very, very important discovery in psychology, okay? So it was discovered by Kai in the 60s, um, Martin Seligman, famous psychologist, well-known psychologist. He was involved in this movement of positive psychology, okay? Well, he later became more involved in that movement. That was really that the idea that psychology tends to focus on people um, who have serious, serious problems, okay? Dysfunctional problems. And he said, well, yeah, it's great that psychology is helping those people, but psychology in general should be helping everybody. It should be helping people live complete happy lives, live optimally in the world, okay, achieve happiness. So that's Martin Seligman, right? So he was interested way back in the 60s in how, how learning occurs and how can people learn through negative experiences, okay? That's kind of what he was interested in. He was kind of following up on work from... Pavlov. You've probably heard of Pavlov's dogs and uh, conditioning. Okay, so basically what Seligman wanted to find out is he used dogs in this experiment. And by the way, the experiment I'm going to tell you about here uh, is quite cruel. Okay, so back in the 60s, the ethical guidelines around psychological experiments were much more lackadaisical, even non-existent than they are today, right? And so you could kind of get away with a lot of the things back in the 60s that you couldn't do now. You couldn't do this type of an experiment nowadays. Okay, certainly with dogs. So what he did was he wanted to find out, well, okay, dogs, can they learn through negative experiences? So what he did was he had these dogs in his laboratory and he would put them into this sort of cage, right, this box, and he would tie them down. And while they were tied down, he would administer these electrical shocks to the dog, okay? And at the same time, there would be a sound made, okay? So after time, what he learned was the dog learned to fear the sound even when it wasn't being shocked. So for a while, it would, sh it would shock the dog, it would shock the dog and make a noise, okay? And over time, yes, the dog learned to fear the noise even when it wasn't shocked. So basically the discovery there is, and it might seem obvious to me and you because we know how clever dogs are sometimes, the discovery was dogs can learn to associate, okay, associate two things. But the interesting thing was, in the experiment, the dog was tied down, okay, and they figured that, okay, well, we'll untie the dog now, and we'll continue to give them the electrical shocks. And the assumption was, of course, now that they're free, they're going to just jump away from the electrical shock uh, every time it's administered, okay? That is not what happened, though. When they untied the dogs who had been in the experiment, they found that the dog just stood there, okay, helplessly. It wasn't trying to escape, even when they weren't tied down anymore and there was an easy way for the dog to escape, right? So they, they, were, they were trying to figure out, well, what is happening here? And they, they, they figured out, because they put new dogs in who hadn't been shocked in the past through the experiment, and gave them shocks and straight away they would jump out when they're not tied down. So the outcome of this experiment, the takeaway from it is the dogs learned to be helpless through the experiment because when they were tied down and they were given the electrical shocks, initially they tried to escape, okay? Tried to escape, tried to escape, tried to escape, but they're tied down. So they learned trying doesn't work. That's what the outcome was for the dog, the takeaway message for the dog. If I try, it's pointless, doesn't work. And then even when a solution was there for the dogs, okay, when they actually could escape, they refused to see it. They refused, they couldn't see it, okay. So that's what learned helplessness is. When you try something that's a bad strategy, okay, over a long period of time, you, you begin to accept that any strategy I now take on in the future, even if it's a different strategy, or the same strategy at a different time, is pointless. Trying doesn't work. Now that was with dogs, okay? 
and you can induce this in all sorts of other animals. Another example is fish. Okay, so if you have fish uh, in a fish tank and you have maybe one predatory fish and a bunch of smaller prey, smaller fish, if they're left to their own natural devices, what will happen is the big fish, the predatory fish will eat those. But in an experiment, what you can do is you can divide the fish tank with a sheet of glass or perspex and you can have the predatory fish on one side and the prey fish, the smaller fish on the other side. What will happen is the big fish will start charging at the paint, the sheet of glass, trying to get to the smaller fish. And because you know fish don't learn as quickly as we do, it takes a long time for the fish to learn this isn't working, but it takes a long time, right? So they keep trying over and over again, hitting their, their, their face against the glass, right? After a while, the fish learns this is pointless, this won't work, okay? And at that point, if you take out the glass, what you'll see is the smaller fish will swim right up to the predatory fish. They'll even start cleaning his teeth, okay? So again, we can see the learned helplessness. All the fish has to do is try again, and it'll be successful, okay? Now, in the animal kingdom, we can see that. And if you think humans are not susceptible to learned helplessness, think again. We absolutely are, 100%, okay? Humans are very susceptible to learned helplessness. And you can, they've even done experiments on this. You can induce learned helplessness in humans in a matter of minutes, okay? The takeaway from this is, and why it's important for you to understand what learned helplessness is all about, is that if you are thinking about your life and your future, okay, and the things that you would like to have happen in your life, the nice experiences you would like to have, and you have a sense that it's pointless, it's hopeless, it won't work for me, I've tried everything before, okay? Remember the dog, remember the fish, okay? There is always a strategy. It's just that you haven't come across the right strategy yet, or you gave up using a strategy that, that wasn't useful at one point in your past, but now might actually be useful, okay? So there are always new strategies. There is always a strategy that will work for you, no matter what area of your life you are interested in improving, okay? So I want you to just be aware that you are susceptible to that trick of the mind okay and if you feel hopeless and you feel like there's no point in trying anything anymore always remember now is the time to start reevaluating my strategy okay if i think about my strategy and i believe that it's it's possible for me to move forward in this area i know i can find a strategy maybe that involves looking at your old strategy and say you know that wasn't work that wasn't working and i know why that wasn't working okay and it's hard to do that right because it would be great if just every strategy we stumbled upon was the right one. But we need to continually reevaluate our strategies and maybe try strategies that we've given up on in the past. Okay. So guys, bear that in mind. And that's Martin Seligman's learned helplessness. And uh, hope you found it interesting. And I will talk to you guys soon. Take care.